and good morning everybody we are in Turku and here we start the Tribecast summer tour so our first guest of this week is a startup entrepreneur who does not consider himself to be a startup <laughs> entrepreneur but basically I was recommended to talk to you Jonas because you're doing a podcast so hello colleague hello please tell our listeners a few things about yourself for sure of course uh, first of all thank you for having me here And thank you for coming to our office. I know it must must not have been easy to carry all this stuff. So thank you. So a couple of things about myself. I would consider myself an sort of an entrepreneur these days, a gamer and a good person. I would start with those three. So if you want, I can open up upon those thesis is a bit so let's start with the kind of entrepreneur because we t- talked about a little bit before we started this one. Name. Yes, my name is Jonas Korkas. <laughs> That's a good point. I always forget that because, you know, we do so much podcasts. So I'm just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Everybody should know me. And yeah, so my company is called Identio. And like we talked about before, I don't consider myself a startup entrepreneur, um, kind of entrepreneur, because in my eyes, we're only like five people. Okay, we're billing quite a lot. Uh, well, quite a lot. It depends on the perspective. But we're doing really well right now. But I still like five people. It's still like, I consider it, Not being an entrepreneur yet. I don't know why. It's it's just me, you know? Like, I can't explain it. It's probably like when I have 50 employees, then I'll consider myself a true entrepreneur, quote unquote. I don't know where that stems from. I think I've been just reading too much LinkedIn or something where where solopreneurs or, you know, people that are doing like solo stuff or calling themselves entrepreneurs and I don't want to associate myself with that because reasons i don't know so yeah that's my entrepreneurial background so to say uh, we can go more in depth about that later um so other thing was gamer so i've always loved games since i was little one i think i have my brother to thank for it since he introduced me to blizzard games actually those were my favorite games and they still are so i've been playing since warcraft 2 starcraft warcraft 3 i was actually pretty damn good at warcraft 3 i was play i played at the assembly land event didn't quite win i think i was fifth or fourth in the finland scene so for a, i think for 12 year old me that was pretty good i would say a little humble brag right here so anyways from there on i continued playing other games uh, warhammer is a big favorite of mine these days it's pretty much world of warcraft or fallout skyrim a little bit here or there so, and and world of warcraft just announced a new patch so i've been playing that a bit In short, Blizzard games have always been a big, you know, hit for me. I always love them, have been playing them since I was a little kid. Thirdly, a good person. I would say that I'm a kind person. Like, I, I'm empathetic. This is, again, a bit of a humble brag. But I always like other people to, you know, to have a good time, to be comfortable with themselves, no matter the situation. Uh, that's why I give quite, <laughs> quite easily, like, salary raises. I always take care of the employees. I want them to have, you know, the best stuff. For example, if we send a consultant to some place, we always get the best hotels for them, uh, pay them really good for those kinds of things. So, I mean, some would call me a people pleaser, but I see no, no, nothing bad with that. I like to take care of my employees. I think they are the reason why I will become successful if I do become successful. So, like, I take care of them and they'll take care of the business and me. Right. And basically, your business is taking care about other companies. Exactly. So, what we're doing is we're doing software development for other companies. Uh, we're part of, like, big teams right now. So, there might be, for example, 20 developers in a project and we have two developers there. So, they're working in part of, like, a bigger group. Uh, they're usually quite big projects uh, from government usually so we had we have to subcontract those since we cannot bid for those big projects just yet uh, since we're quite small and they have really big requirements for themselves for the projects you know in order to start bidding for it pretty much all of the projects are in Helsinki so one was actually in Tampere so shout out to Tampere really like the place I this might actually sound quite crazy to some people as a guy from Turku, he's saying Tampere is great, that might be causing some confusion, but I like Tampere, I like Helsinki, I like everybody, so it's not a big deal. So yeah, we're doing software development, like I mentioned, consulting, more or less, our background is in software development companies, so it was a natural, you know, to start doing this, pretty much. Though you don't really consider yourself successful yet, <laughs> uh, I know that you have been highly praised during Chip Festival in 2015. A few words about that, please. Sure, of course. So 2015 was like the turning point, I would say. Like if, I can give, if I can build a bit more context for that. We were part of the Startup Journey 2015 Accelerator program back then. Uh, we did uh, a web application that identifies dyslexia. 
So that was our project, which we which we pitched, which we built during the startup project. We actually started it from a school project in 2014. So and it continued to startup journey. Okay, so we were in startup journey. Middle way there was this pitch competition in Kotka. I think it was first time organized in 2015. So everybody was quite hyped about that. So we went there. It was actually two. We had to go two times there when it was first organized because we had to pitch ourselves into it first in order to pitch in the final. So we had, we had to travel two times to Kotka. I mean, it's a four hour drive. Okay, it's nothing, it's not that bad, but still. So first we got in top three when we first went there. And I think the biggest turning point in that case was that there were other students from like Alto Iliopisto, you know, these big shot schools, you know, which supposedly create very successful people and we kind of didn't know our value. And at that point, so we were kind of like, oh, how are we going to do against those? Like those are the, those are the best of the best, you know? So I was like, I don't say scared, but I was like a bit skeptical of myself, but we honed the pitch really perfectly. And we did that. We pitched in the Kotka Kotka Market Square, it was raining, it was like apocalypse. (laughs) No, it wasn't. (laughs) But so pretty much we did that. And yeah, we pitched there. There were 10 other teams, uh, three from Turku. Uh, We managed to win that. In retrospect, I would say that we kind of had an unfair advantage per se, because our project was, uh, you know, for the greater good. Again, because we were like building a web application that identifies dyslexia. Other people were building like the Tinder for finding jobs, smart hard hats, and you know those kinds of like cool, cool to have stuff. But nothing like you would say would be, would save si- the world. Yes, exactly. We were like the cliche saving the world type of thing, and we actually did really well. So we won that, and I think that was like the turning point. Like then we started understanding that hey, maybe we can actually do this. Actually we might actually, you know, have something in us, you know, in that in that kind of stuff. So yeah, we won the, you know, the Alto Iliopisto university guys and gals. And so that gave us quite a lot of confidence. And we got a quite a lot of, quite a big of a boost in Turku. No pun intended because we were in boost, you know. So we got quite a big of a boost in, in our, you know, reputation and whatnot. And um, actually, funny story, just to sidetrack a bit. When we won the pitch captain competition, after that, Sami got a job from Vardin because of that. <laughs> so that was actually quite fun. I think it was like his mother heard, you know, told her colleague or something who was connected with one of the founders of Vardin. And they were like, hey, yeah, we want you to come to our job. So actually, that was actually pretty cool. Like, I don't think we would have got into a radar without winning it. So that's pretty much it. I think, like I said, I always consider that as the turning point. Since we built the confidence, we saw that we can actually win, you know. I think that's big. And here I can make a small spoiler for our listeners, because Kotka and Ship Festival are officially included in the Tribecast Summer Tour. Look forward to that episode. That would be fun. So yeah, now we know a bit about Kotka and your story there. So the product is non-existent now. Yes, we debunked that. I can tell you the story behind that. Uh, basically, so we won the startup journey after that too, spoiler alert, together with another team, of course. I think it must be Lightful who makes these beautiful butterfly nectar things. So anyways, um, after that, we kind of continued doing it part-time, but we're still, I mean, during all this, we were, st- we were working a full week. So we had day jobs while we were doing this. So we continued with our day jobs. And you know how these kinds of side projects become when you have a full-time job. We had a thesis to write. You know, life gets over. So we kind of slowed down a bit. And then one of the founders actually left to Canada after for looking for love, so to say. So shout out to Kimma. He knows if he's listening. So yeah, that was like one, minus one already. And then, well, you know, day-to-day job just took over us. And little by little, we lost the motivation. I think... It, could actually tell more a bit like why we went to startup journey why we went to you know ship pitch festival we wanted to show that we can win that was the only thing like and we kind of ac- by accident stumbled upon the project and we, we were really hyped to do it but you know the market wasn't that big and we kind of just lost motivation which is unfortunate but what can you do like i'm gonna say it out loud like we lost motivation we debunked that and we started doing consulting and part-time billing while we were doing our main jobs day job so to say so we kind of shifted from the product to consulting i did some social media for a couple of companies sami continued to build some other companies too because he's a good programmer and this is 
the story of the startup part of your entrepreneurship. And now let's talk a bit about the podcast you have here. The podcast you hold is in Finnish, so all I could understand that it is existing. We have one episode in English, actually. Oh, okay. I haven't found that one. Jonas, what do you talk about in your podcast? That's a great question. We follow the principles of, if you know Gary Vaynerchuk, we do document over creation. So we just document our journey. The podcast is about our journey of becoming, of building the company if you could say it in one word. Of course, we've had some offshoots, for example, Meet Turun Itetalot, which translates to meet the local IT companies here in Turku. So we're doing that kind of a show, like we interview other IT companies here in Turku. We have some interviews from exciting persons, very good persons, you know. For example, we had uh, the CEO of Vardin here. Oh, actually, I went there. Anyways, so, well, basically 90, I think 85% of it is like, yeah, just documenting our journey pretty much so we sit down we tell what's been happening what's on our minds like for example if we closed a uh, one million project which we did over four years so we just to clarify so we didn't get one million dollars in our bank account so we just tell like hey this is how we did it um this is why you know this is how i do sales please use the tips if you want to that's pretty much it like we do have another offshoot too so there's like the, the main thing is like i said we document our journey of becoming entrepreneurs or being entrepreneurs, however you want to interpret that, and, you know, what we learn during our journey. And then there are some offshoots, like I told you. One offshoot is, like, after work with Veli Pekka. He's from Shift. So, I mean, we get this crazy idea. So we just pretty much just stock out, you know, push content out all the time. I hope that answered your question. It definitely did. And for our listeners, I can remind that we had an interview with Veli Pekka Vittanen from Shift Business Festival a few episodes ago. So you can check on that as well. So as a person who started a startup and then kind of collapsed it because of loss of motivation or whatever, how do you see the startup ecosystem of Finland of nowadays? And do you think it's worth starting a startup now or is it better just to have a more safe job? It depends on the person. Like I would say that if you're under 20 or 20 slash 22 or something, you can take the risk. Just go ahead. Um, about the startup ecosystem in Finland, unfortunately, I have been following it since 2016. So my all of my experiences are based on those. Um, what I would say about that, well, Finland is a small country. So it provides some opportunities and it provides quite a lot of like negative sides. Since it's a small country, you kind of have to think global immediately for the big markets. So I think that's a problem-ish in the startup economy. And quite a lot of like people want to build something big, but they're not entrepreneurs really. Like I encourage people to try if you have the itch to, you know, to try. For example, we had the itch to try, so we went and tried. If you have the itch, please go ahead, try, be big risk, especially if you're 20 years old or 18 or, you know, young like we are. Please go ahead, try, try it out. But if you want to build a startup because it's hyped right now, don't do it. If everybody's telling you to build a startup and you kind of don't even want to build a startup, like don't do it. Get a job. I mean, you might have the urge to build it later. I think the culture and economy, I mean, the culture pretty much puts entrepreneurship on a pedestal right now. So it's a good and a bad thing. For example, the people who should never be entrepreneurs, they're going to try to be entrepreneurs. They'll raise some money and then they'll just flop it. And that has some consequences also. Like, can you deal with failure? If you if you fail a company, if you fail with a company, it's public. It's out there. Everybody knows you failed. Can you stomach that? So I think that would be my answer to the question. Like, if you have a niche, yes, go for it. Please take a big of a risk as you can if you're in your early 20s or something like that. If you don't and you feel like forcing it, don't do it. Just get a job or something. But I mean, do something that just makes you happy, pretty much. <laughs> That's my answer to the question. Thank you very much for this interview, Jonas. Now we know what is behind doing a startup and when should you stop doing it. And I'll try to search for the episode of your podcast in English. Or maybe you'll make one more episode in English for people like me. <laughs> for sure. We will do that, actually. <laughs> right. Thank you very much for this interview. And now we're getting further to other guests of our Turku episode of Tribecast Summer Tour. Thank you. We have one more guest this week. And now we're going to talk about how big corporations and big companies can be friendly towards startup world. So, hello, Yanni. Hello. And first, please tell our listeners a few things about yourself. 
Hi, I'm uh, Jani Rusi, currently working in Nordea, in Startup and Growth Unit here in Turku. My background is actually in sports. I've been swimming for about 20 years, about 10 years in national team, in five international uh, competitions, European Championships, World Cups, uh, since last time, 2012, when I had a shoulder injury and 